Okay, are we ready to start? Okay. So before I start the disclaimer, what, what I'll do initially is I'll just quickly, I'll, I'll be a little bit faster because I want to concentrate on um, some of the things that I worked on last year. So I, I included some aspects of previous work for the benefit of you know, those of you that are new and those of you that are not familiar with my work. And as a, rem as a reminder for those of you that might be familiar but have forgotten about what it is I'm working towards. All right, so, <coughs> so thank you very much for uh, taking the time off to attend the presentation. Uh, the title of my talk today is Streamline Orchestration, Investigating the Impact of Organized Orchestration in Teaching, quite a mouthful, I suppose. Uh, and surprise for those of you that attended my previous presentations, right? The title has not changed, I don't know if that's a good sign. Um, but I've been working with Hussein and Professor Christoph Menel since beginning of 2014. Uh, and my, my current research interests, um, at least for the last two years, are situated within the educational technology research area, otherwise known as the technology enhanced um, learning research uh, area. And I'm basically studying what we're calling technology driven orchestration and I'm doing all this because I'd like to better understand, or would like to better understand um, how the organization of learning activities tends to um, influence the effectiveness of educators. And the thesis goal is twofold. Uh, in the first instance, we're interested in investigating the impact of organized orchestration in teaching using an orchestration workbench. And uh, secondly, to uh, investigate the successful use of the orchestration workbench. Um, so motivation of this work stems from the fact that um, Explicit support of educators uh, is considered to be one of the most effective ways of improving the quality of education. And one of the ways in which we can actually support educators is through a process called orchestration. And um, simplest definition is, uh, I suppose, the real-time management of um, learning activities by educators. So think of what typically happens when um, a person goes into this class and then starts teaching, or the range of activities that they would otherwise perform, that's orchestration. Right? But the issue with orchestration is, um, it's actually twofold. In the first instance, um, it's considered challenging, and there's actually a lot of literature that points to the many strands that make orchestration challenging. Um, two case in points. In the first instance, there's typically a wide range of activities that are performed by educators, right? Um, and most importantly, there are there's the timing constraint for uh, constraint associated with orchestration, right? So all the different activities that uh, someone or an educator would perform in a formal learning space would typically take place within a fixed um, Time frame, right? That's a challenge. Time is a premium. Um, and in the second uh, instance, um, or so we've come to learn, orchestration is ad hoc. Ad hoc in the sense what is technology driven orchestration. So it's ad hoc in the sense that there is currently no standardized way of um, orchestrating uh, learning activities using technology, right? Uh, specialized tools exist, um, and most of the time, oftentimes, educators tend to use generic tools to do that. Um, and so working from this perspective, um, the, the core research claim for my work is pretty simple and straightforward, really. What we're saying is that streamlined orchestration can be attained uh, through the explicit organization of learning activities, right, using an orchestration workbench framework. And we hypothesize that this would um, potentially make uh, educators more effective. Um, and so we have two core research questions that are guiding this research work. Um, in the first case, we're trying to figure out if um, um, an orchestration workbench could enable educators to become more effective. Um, and then also to try and uh, a certain the sort of impact that um, the orchestration workbench might have on the overall teaching experience of educators. Um, and so what we envision to be um, the core contribution of our work is basically this um, um, new approach to technology-driven orchestration, which we've coined streamlined technology-driven orchestration. Um, um, and, and some of the uh, facets that fund uh, this contribution is we see this uh, major contribution to take the form of um, the wide range of um, prototype UI and workflows um, that will showcase how uh, the workbench approach could be attained to organize orchestration, um, the range of case studies that we've performed in authentic uh, educational settings, and then finally, um, uh, the analysis and the results of um, experimental results that we'd have collected at the end of it all. So to kind of uh, situate the sort of ev evaluation plan that we um, initially scoped um, in the early stages of our work, um, we decided to align it with um, a well-established framework. It's called um, the five plus um, three uh, conceptual orchestration framework. And uh, just quite simply put, what we're interested in is just three strands of this conceptual framework, um, the management, uh, flexibility, and assessment um, aspects. 
right? Um, and tied to that, um, what we did was we came up with um, a list of potential evaluation techniques that we would uh, use um, in association with this conceptual framework. Um, the list is on the table on the left-hand side. And what we're essentially doing in this is, uh, so we um, implement um, uh, prototype uh, wavelength um, uh, platforms and then um, apply the appropriate evaluation technique, uh, conduct the experiment and then collect the data. In the early stages of our work, uh, we conducted um, um, preliminary work uh, in the form of expert review sessions. Um, the, the, the main objective was basically to, to try and understand the, the, a typical, uh, the typical orchestration landscape in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an example uh, educational setting. So we conducted these expert review sessions directly at UCT, and we interacted with six teaching staff, uh, conducted interviews, informal interviews with them. Um, um, but the most important aspect here is one of the main outcomes was that we were able to fully understand the ad hoc nature of orchestration in this environment, right? This took the form of a um, wide range of uh, technologies that um, people utilize. I remember speaking to someone in the department right here at um, Point, they experimented with Twitter to try and uh, use it as a back channel, for instance. Exciting stuff like varying learning models. Um, and then towards the end of 2014, we conducted a case study um, for a flipped class, classroom. The main objective here was to, to really um, assess the feasibility and potential of, of this approach in, in, in an educational setting, right, in a real world setting. Um, so we conducted this case study with um, the second year computer architecture course. Um, and um, uh, some interesting aspects about this particular course is uh, three core activities were performed in that course, right? Um, so we built an, um, 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 a prototype uh, UI web page uh, uh, interface, um, user interface. Uh, and then, uh, of course, we were interested in uh, trying to understand how this tool would be utilized, so the usage pattern from at least the educator's point of view. And then also we were aware of the fact that um, um, this, this sort of approach would have, uh, could potentially have an adverse effect on the other important uh, factor in the typical formal learning space. So think of the, um, aha, the learners, right, students. Um, so the, the study was basically aimed at those two uh, strands, right? So in, the term of, in, in terms of the usage pattern, uh, what we discovered was uh, that, um, obviously, the, oh, welcome. The, uh, on average, the, um, um, the tool was actually uh, used much more than uh, um, the other tools that the educator used to orchestrate uh, some of the other added activities aside from the three core activities, right? In terms of the learning experience, uh, uh, we discovered that um, the most important out outcome was actually that uh, users were not able to, to actually notice that there was this new uh, tool that was being used by the educator. As far as they were concerned, it was something akin or similar to, uh, let's say, Microsoft PowerPoint, for instance. Um, um, so we, we actually found out that uh, the approach facilitated the new, neutral flow of, acti of activities, and then um, uh, there was a perceived uh, uh, positive impact on the overall uh, learner's uh, learning experience. So, uh, <coughs> back to the main uh, theme of the talk here. The, main focus of the talk. Uh, towards the end of last year, uh, we conducted a comparative analysis. Um, and the, the, the plan, um, or the, the objective of the study was basically to, to compare um, what we perceive to be ad hoc orchestration with um, our proposed approach, right? So we used, um, I'm pretty sure most of us have used portable apps. Uh, we used uh, portable apps to uh, basically simulate the ad hoc nature of orchestration. And then we compared this with, um, um, uh, a prototype uh, web paint UI, right? Um, we, so we, we, we set out to basically try and figure out, of course, how ad hoc orchestration compares with um, the organized approach using a web paint, right? Um, and uh, the hypothesis, two hypotheses that we came up with was um, hypothesized hypothesize that the web paint would be more effective, obviously, um, that it would have uh, a positive effect on the teaching experience. Um, so we conducted a reading group um, control experiment with a total of 29 participants from the CAPE uh, uh, 
Kepenus Lab University of Technology, CPUT, um, and there's a department within the Faculty of Education and Social Sciences called uh, GET, uh, General Education and Training. Um, so in, in terms of the um, overall um, experimental design, uh, we identified one uh, independent variable that's orchestration techniques. So think of the ad hoc nature of the orchestration approach. Um, dependent variables are obviously the factors we're interested in measuring, so time on task. Um, we use the, I'll talk more about the uh, survey instrument that we use, the attractive tool. So we're interested in the dimensions associated with this, um, um, with this uh, uh, survey instrument. Um, and then we also uh, uh, identify control variables in the form of uh, background information for the users. So ISP level, this is the level of study, it's called a, uh, intermediate and a senior phase level. So we work with uh, levels um, two, three, and four. So these are individuals that uh, would typically have been exposed to teaching experience already. Um, the setup is such that uh, when you get to in first year, they prepare you for going to teaching practice in second year, and then you start going to teaching practice until you graduate. Um, so we also uh, try to find out what sort of um, computing experience those users uh, had prior. Uh, so in terms of the procedure, um, this is a process. So we went out there thinking about this, and this was there to help out. Um, so we, we paid him, of course. We, uh, so the process was that we, we, we actually used random um, experimental blocks, right? So we'd have, uh, the initial plan was to use three blocks here. But then, um, unfortunately, we didn't, we, we initially wanted to work with ISP4, three, and two separately. But the, the, the participants actually came, came through at different intervals, so we ended up quickly changing the plan, and so we used random experimental blocks. So the process was such that we would uh, give it a, a briefing. So um, an introduction to what the overall thing was all about. Uh, we had them uh, sign a consent form, um, and then they filled out um, the background information. So think of the control variables that I mentioned earlier. Um, and then after that, these users orchestrated um, um, uh, what the, the range of um, learning activities that we identified from um, group five teachers, right? So it helps uh, syllabus by syllabus, uh, environmental science, I believe. Um, so random in the sense that uh, we'd have participant one walk in, uh, so they would first of all start with, with let's say, um, portable apps, and then subsequently uh, proceed to use the workbench approach. Uh, second user comes in, they start with workbench, um, and then portable apps, right? We're trying to counterbalance to try and uh, avoid uh, uh, um, unforeseen results that might have resulted as a, as a result of um, the, the ordering of, of the orchestration using the two different approaches. Um, and then we had them fill out um, an attractive tool questionnaire. This is a standard um, survey in instrument. Uh, there's a lot of information available online if you're interested. Um, and then we debriefed them, right? We paid them their footy runs um, and then thanked them for their time. Um, so in terms of the experimental results, uh, time on tasks. Um, so overall what we found was that uh, People that orchestrated these learning activities using uh, Wakebench approach um, actually orchestrated these activities 14% um, faster, or at least close to 15% faster than those that um, uh, than, than, than the portable apps approach and the ad hoc approach, right? Uh, but then we were also aware of the fact that we had all these uh, associated control variables, you know, and the ordering of the groups. Remember the counterbalancing, and so. We, we actually zeroed down to try and figure out what sort of results we'd have. Interesting things here, right? You'll notice that, uh, um, I think I'll start with the, the groups, the counterbalance groups, right? You notice that uh, for users, users in group one started with Wakebench and then portable apps, group two, portable apps, Wakebench, right? So you notice that um, for those that started with uh, portable apps and then proceeded to Wakebench, there is a difference, yes, but the difference is not as much as the users that started off with Wakebench and then use portable apps here. Ah, well, I mean, um, speculation here, uh, initial thoughts are that uh, is a learning, the learning effect that is obviously more um, inclined towards the workbench approach, right? Because they were ex uh, uh, orchestrating the same types of learning activities, but just using two different approaches, right? And in terms of the control variable results, uh, interesting things here. So in terms of the ISPs, uh, ISP levels, uh, ISP 2, 4, and there were certain users from that were doing a different type of educational program. These um, actually orchestrated the activities faster uh, using the Wakebench approach and the portable apps approach. Uh, ISP 3, 
Um, that was really interesting. The, the time that it took was the same. Um, so similar trends for things like uh, uh, teaching experience, facet or control variable and uh, computing experience, right? Uh, so I, I, I'm, I'm putting a caveat here. Uh, we, we, we have, uh, what we did was we identified the p values of this. The results were not really statistically significant. Uh, we noticed the value there. We, I'll, I'll talk more about this at a later stage. Uh, but in terms of the uh, portfolio presentation, these are all, so this is uh, everything to do with uh, attractive, these are standard measures, right? So looking at the uh, portfolio presentation graph, uh, you notice that if, even though the, the two approaches both lie in the same uh, um, uh, character region, uh, but the weight range approach is actually leaning uh, slightly up there. So thing is, uh, top right is good, right? Bottom left is bad. So negative, positive. So you need to know. Uh, clearly, work bench is more up there. Although, and I know, right, you're going to say, but where are the uh, confidence rectangles here? And so I, I didn't use the official tool to actually generate this because uh, the, the, the survey were actually manually uh, generated. So this is an attempt. I think I'll figure out how to draw the confidence um, rectangles eventually. But the point is, work bench leans more towards the desirable state, right? Um, and then in terms of the... Um, the four dimensions, attractive dimensions, uh, even though there's no statistical significance here, obviously, uh, but you notice from the graph here that uh, the weight bench approach, uh, at least for uh, the PQ, HQI, and uh, attractiveness uh, qualities is uh, more positive than compared to the ad hoc approach, right? Yes, no statistical significance again, but again, talk more about this later on. Uh, and then to try and better understand, you know, what could have led to the things here, what we did was we drew down the weight pairs, right? These are against the standard measure. Um, this showcasing uh, just two e example dimensions here, right? Uh, this is a total of four, but just to show you like the, 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 the uh, ratings for the individual weight pairs, right? Uh, so some, some study findings for this is, um, in the first instance, uh, we, we identified that uh, obviously the, uh, Learning activities orchestrated with uh, a workbench were done faster than uh, um, portable apps or ad hoc approach. Uh, and in terms of the participants' uh, perceived success, which is tied to the PQ dimension or quality, um, um, there are more uh, positive results uh, for workbench approach in comparison to the ad hoc approach, right? Uh, uh, but for the user experience, uh, save for the uh, HQS dimension, the HQI and ATT dimensions were actually more positive for the weight bench approach. Uh, um, and then a uh, caveat here is that um, in terms of the validity of the results, we are aware of the fact that um, uh, there's really no statistical significance, right? Uh, but we, we sort of like have an idea as to why this is the case, with the variance analysis. And also, we had initially, before conducting the experiment, we had, um, we had initially, uh, computed the total number, the minimum number of users would need to get statistically significant figures. We worked with 29 out of the initially planned 52 users. Um, and so the, the plan here is to replicate the study with the remaining users. Um, this is work in progress. Um, future directions, uh, we can be working towards uh, trying to work on the, on the pre-session management side of the, the approach because uh, all the different uh, prototypes that we've uh, implemented actually make use of uh, uh, static uh, backend testing. We're thinking of employing our standards, uh, for instance, simple sequencing standard, AMS Global Simple Sequencing Standard. Um, um, and then in terms of the plan, what I have planned, basically, the plan is to, number one, replicate the study. Um, there's another pending study. It's a case study uh, for, for CS 1010. I've, I've been teaching assistant from last year, and there's some interesting aspects that um, I intend to incorporate into things I've observed that I intend to incorporate in experiment number three. Um, and then there's also um, a planned associated large scale experiment. Um, in terms of the timeline, I anticipate to at least have a final draft of the manuscript by April 2017. In case you're enthusiastic about reading more on orchestration, I'm encouraging you to, these are some of the references, things. And I'm sorry for, Going over time, I, say, I sincerely apologize. Sorry. Uh, I hope you don't mind um, recording the conversation. Mm -hmm. We'll try and move the camera up. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs>
Tuna, you want to ask the first question? 